Satyam param dimahi. O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By which, by, by which uh, one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the modes, three modes of nature, so the modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal i therefore meditate upon him lord sri krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world i meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth dharma projita kaitra Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vasavam atravastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni krite. Kimba pureishwaraha. Sadyohide avarudyate tra. Kriti vihi susu subhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion. For the welfare of all, such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam fulam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Hibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mohur ahoraska bhuvi bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectar and juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hariantak Stohi Abhadrani Vidonuti Srihitsatam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from direct or hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. In this way, a devotee 
the devotee develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Nasta presu bhagresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati tamasoke bhakti bhavati naistiki by development of devotional service one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance and thus material lust and avarice are diminished Tadarajas tamo bhavo Kamaloba dayas jayasya Chete tare navidam Sitman satve prasiddhati Yeah, by development of devotional service um, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance and thus material loss and avarice are diminished Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha Bhagavat tattva vijyanam Mukta sangha sajayate When these impurities are wiped away The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante chas chidyante sarvasamsaya shiyante chas shakarmani drista evat manishwari I'm sorry, yes. Uh, thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter. Huh? 16, yeah. Chapter 16, number 1. Sutta Uvacha Tata Pariksit Dvijavarya Sikshaya Mahim Mahabhagavata Sasasaha Yatahi sutyam abhijata kovida. Samadhi san vipra mahad gunastata. Uh, Sutta Goswami said, translation, Sutta Goswami said, O learned Brahmanas, Maharaj Pariksit then began to rule over the world as a great devotee of the Lord, under the instructions of the best of the twice-born Brahmanas. He ruled by those great qualities which were foretold by expert astrologers at the time of his birth. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. At the time of Maharaj Pariksit's birth, the expert astrologer Brahmanas foretold some of his qualities. Maharaj Pariksit developed all those qualities, being a great devotee of the Lord. The real qualification is to become a devotee of the Lord, and gradually all good qualities worthy of possession develop. Maharaj Pariksit was a Mahabhagavata, or a first class devotee who was not only well-versed in the science of devotion, but also able to convert others to become devotees by his transcendental instructions. 
Maharaj Pariksit was therefore a devotee of the first order, and thus he used to consult great sages and learned brahmanas who could advise him by the shastras how to execute the state administration. Such great kings were more responsible than modern elected executive heads because they obliged the great authorities by following their instructions left in Vedic literatures. There was no need for impractical fools to enact daily a new legislative bill and to conveniently alter it again and again to serve some purpose. The rules and regulations were already set forth by great sages like Manu, Yajnavalkya, Varasara, and other liberated sages. And the enactments were all suitable for all ages in all places. Therefore, the rules and regulations were standard without flaw or defect. Kings like Maharaj Pariksit have their council of advisors, and all the members of that council were either great sages or brahmanas of the first order. They did not accept any salary, nor had they any necessity for such salaries. The state would get the best advice without expenditure. They were themselves samadarshi, equal to everyone, both man and animal. They would not advise the king to give protection to man and instruct him to kill the poor animals. Such council members were not fools or representatives to compose a fool's paradise. They were all self-realized souls, and they knew perfectly well how all living beings in the state would be happy, both in this life and in the next. They were not concerned with the hedonistic philosophy of eat, drink, be merry, and enjoy. They were philosophers in the real sense, and they knew well what is the mission of human life. Under all obligations, the advisory council of the king would give correct directions, and a king or executive head, being himself a qualified devotee of the Lord, would scrutinizingly follow them for the welfare of the state. The state in the days of Maharaj Yudhisthira or Maharaj Pariksit was a welfare state in the real sense of the term because no one was unhappy in that state, be he man or animal. Maharaj Pariksit was an ideal king for a welfare state of the world. Srila Prabhupada Patita Bhavani Kijay. So Srila Prabhupada has said that Europe and America will fail, and mainly because they're killing so many animals to eat them. Not only that, they're killing their own babies. And in Kali Yuga, they will also eat them later on. So when we hear statements like that from Srila Prabhupada, for example, some devotees were claiming that the scientists said that California would fall into the ocean. And they asked Prabhupada about that. He says, that's not going to happen. If you chant Hare Krishna sincerely in our Los Angeles temple. <laughs> so Prabhupada is not a doom and gloom person, but he's realistic because he has this symptom that's being spoken about in this purport today. They were themselves samadarshi, equal to everyone, both man and animal. They would not advise the king to give protection to man and instruct him to kill the poor animals. Such council members were not fools or representatives to compose a fool's paradise. They were all self-realized souls, and they knew perfectly well how all living beings in the state would be happy, both in this life and in the next. They were not concerned with the hedonistic philosophy of eat, drink, be merry, and enjoy. They were philosophers in the real sense, and they knew well what is the mission of human life. So that was this is a description of Prabhupada also. He doesn't say things that are whimsical or foolish, but he tells the truth. And he says, Europe and America will fail. 
because they're killing so many animals to eat them. So uh, then their leaders are not Samadarshi. They don't see, they don't see that uh, they, they don't act equal to everyone. They're partial based on racism, based on ethnicity, based on nationalism, based on the body. And therefore, they don't give proper advice. Therefore, the people are not happy. Would you say everyone is happy in the United States? No. Would you say everyone's happy in Europe? No. Would you say everyone's happy in China? No. Would you say everyone's happy on the North Pole? No. How about the South Pole? No. So that means the leaders of society are not bona fide. And uh, Prabhupada also said something very interesting. He says, uh, persons who serve the Lord automatically serve the family, but the opposite is not true. What's the opposite? Someone who serves the family also serves the Lord. He says it's not true. Let's see how, what he says here. Uh, he says, the great endeavor, the Mahatma undertakes to execute devotional service is more intense than the ordinary man's voluntary acceptance of excessive pains and troubles to maintain his family and home. The struggle for maintaining family and relatives is illusion or maya. Hence, it is truly distressing. By contrast, the difficulties one accepts in serving the Supreme Lord are transcendental, and therefore they are a source of sublime bliss. Moreover, a person who serves the Supreme Lord automatically serves his family. But the opposite is not true. Serving the family is not equivalent to serving the Lord. All Mahatmas agree on this point. Not only does the person who serves the Supreme Lord serve his relatives, but he also serves the entire world of moving and non-moving living beings. Thus, service to Lord Krishna is the prime cause of world peace and harmony. Well, wow, this is a big statement. Like, we, got, we got to think about it. Is, do we accept this or not accept this? Is, is what Prabhupada is saying here true or, or not true? Some people would argue. They'd say, well, they'd say, wait a minute. He's saying that if you serve the family, uh, it's not really serving God. Uh, serving the family is not equivalent to serving the Lord. And so most people would argue that, no, that's not right. So, is it right or is it wrong? That's the question. Is what Prabhupada is saying here right or wrong? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves. We're going to, because we're going to read many things like this in Prabhupada's purports. And let's say, quote, normal people. They're not really normal, but anyway, normal people would, would disagree with it. Say, well, this is nonsense. Everyone's saying, family, 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 family. You know, every politician that gets caught cheating on his wife, he says, oh, I'm very sorry. The most important thing for me is family. You know, <laughs> that's after they get caught. <laughs> so uh, what does that mean exactly? Well, it means that people have a materialistic understanding of family. Family is a place where a few people engage in sense gratification. That's called the family. But that's not the real family. The real family is a Chuta Gotra. Krishna has family because that's eternal. The family that we have here is based on the body and the relationships, if it's, they stay on the bodily level, are not eternal. So how do we serve Krishna and, serve, and that is serving the family. Well, uh, let's say the husband and wife don't agree about Krishna consciousness. Let's say the wife is against it or the husband is against it. 
then how would you serve Krishna and serve your family? Well, you'd have to do it secretly. You'd have to have secret offerings of, of prasadam because if the antagonistic uh, uh, member of the of the uh, couple is against the Krishna consciousness, then you have to do it secretly. But Krishna accepts prayers that are made, let's say, secretly. He hears all prayers, whether you say them out loud or whether you say them privately. So one would have to be very tolerant, would have to uh, be very, uh, let's say, discreet, not to agitate the other members of the family. And if in the long term, the members of the family would appreciate that person, whether it's the mother or the father, in the long term, not in the short term. In the short term, they would be, you know, don't you dare chant Hare Krishna in the house. You know, we don't want you talking to the kids anymore about this Krishna. You know, they'd be doing all that, right? But <laughs> in the long term, they would be convinced. Because why? Maya is on our side. Maya is not on their side. And eventually, they'll be defeated by Maya and defeated by their own tricks of their mind because they're not, not following the regulative principles. So this is, uh, see, now, there might be some uh, question, well, what if, you know, my husband forces me to do things that I don't want to do? You know, well, no one can force you to do things you don't want to do. But one should not be angry, one should not be uh, mean, one should not be uh, uh, like uh, always putting uh, uh, threats. One should be, remain humble and meek, but always respectful and dedicated to serving Krishna without agitating others. That this is an art, it's not an easy thing. Just like Prabhupada talks about his sister. He said, my sister is very, very advanced devotee. But in order to keep peace in the family, she would cook fish for her husband. She never ate fish, but just to keep peace in the family. Right? So sometimes one is forced to do certain things. Uh, not that they're forced, but they, in, in order to maintain the stability of the vow of marriage, sometimes people will make certain uh, concessions, not that they themselves will break the principles, but uh, just to keep the peace, they'll do certain things to uh, not disturb the normal functioning. Normal functioning is husband and wife should live peacefully together in order to raise the kids. Now, after the kids are raised, then, uh, one can, uh, if, if there's still, you know, all this tension, one can separate. But uh, at least while the kids are growing up, one should remain steady in the uh, protecting the children and, and uh, keeping peace in the family. So these are things that are hard to understand for most people. But devotees, if they have faith, if they get advice when they need advice, and they get encouragement when they need encouragement, they can do it. They can do it, and they will be successful in the end because Maya is on our side. She's not on their side, right? They're all going to be, at one point or other, defeated by Maya. Okay, so Prabhupada then says that uh, not only does the person who serves the Supreme Lord serve his relatives, but he also serves the entire world of moving and non-moving living beings. Thus, service to Lord Krishna is the prime cause of world peace and harmony. This is an amazing statement. You don't only serve your family, you serve the whole world by being Krishna conscious. So we should take these statements you know, seriously. But the practical application of it often needs advice from uh, more advanced devotees, and that's okay. Why not get advice for a successful life rather than avoid advice and have a disastrous life? Right. Okay, 
So Prabhupada says then, the Mahatmas are always ready to render such service to the Lord with great determination. In this regard, his divine grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura, once made this comment in a lecture. The neophyte Vaishnava devotees ringing the bell even once during the worship of the deity of the Supreme Lord, is a million times more valuable spiritually and otherwise than the charitable fruit of workers building many hospitals, feeding thousands of the poor, or building homes, or even the empirical philosophers, Vedic studies, meditation, austerities, and penances. So he says, the neophyte devotee who's ringing the bell, doing arti, <laughs> is more uh, valuable spiritually and otherwise than the charitable fruit of workers building many hospitals, feeding thousands of the poor, or building homes, or even the empirical philosophers, Vedic studies, meditation, austerities, and penances. But that's an amazing s statement again. You know, here in, in less than one page, there's several amazing statements by Prabhupada that most people would eject, reject. So then how can we accept it? That's the question. How can we accept it? Well, well somebody could say, oh, well, now look, he just said that building hospitals and feeding thousands of poor? What's Harvey Les doing? He's, he has this free food truck. He's out there feeding the poor. You know, is it, that means it's nonsense. You know, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. We shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> well, uh, no, the difference is this. If you distribute food, then it is a waste of time and it's nonsense. If you distribute prashadam, it's different. And if you have some ability for people to understand as time goes on that this is prashadam, this is something special. It's not just food. So these are all the part of the art of work and and to be able to do these things that normally would be considered nonsense but do it in such a way that is actually helping people to become krishna conscious not everybody understands that either that's the point even devote, some devotees don't understand that so these are strategies for spreading krishna consciousness now you shouldn't go so far to uh, let's say, speculate a strategy that actually takes you away from Krishna consciousness, right? Or takes people away from Krishna consciousness. So there's an art, just like a person who's a tight rope walker. You learn the art. Now, if you get up on that tight rope like this, you'll immediately fall down. <laughs> so don't, don't try and do something without being trained, you know? But if you get the training, then you'll also be able to walk on a tight rope, you know, and not fall down. But if, if you don't get the training, the minute you fall down and say, see, it's, it, it doesn't work. You know, why, why are other people trying to do this? You know, it doesn't work. You know, no, it's not a fact. Uh, you need training to make things work. And the training sometimes is long and, and, and it's uh, difficult. But once you get that training, you're able to do things that other people can't do. So never think, because Prabhupada says that a devotee is able to use everything in the service of Krishna. Now, someone will say, oh, wait a minute, I, I don't agree to that, you know, everything? No, 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 I said, that's just an exaggeration. No, it's not. It's a fact. But not everybody can do it. Okay? Just like, I can't play in an NBA basketball team, right? Does that mean I'm useless? No. Maybe I can do some things that the NBA basketball players can't do also, right? So, but uh, to use everything in Krishna's service, it is possible. It is possible. And we need to accept this, but understand that everyone might not be able to do it. It requires special training over a long period of time. Okay, so these are different points. The main point is, sometimes Prabhupada will make these statements, 
that norm or bhakti sanat saraswati thakur will make a statement that people just can't understand but it's because you understand how well we're reading it every day therefore only by hearing from krishna or from his devotee in krishna consciousness can one understand the science of krishna that's the point <clears throat> so we have to keep hearing and then all these things that seem impossible or seem uh, unreachable you'll see that it is possible with proper training all glories to Srila Prabhupada ki jay. Are there any questions? Yeah, it is obvious. Well, of course, for uh, ordinary people, they, they don't see the difference. But they understand it's really good, ordinary people to share. Because when we do super we are considering the world to be the same family. Yeah. Just when you cook food in the, in the family, yeah. for shot, and then everybody, you know, it's it's a benefit. So we're sharing. Actually, we're sharing. Yes. Yes. So it does. It does depend a lot on the consciousness of the people who are doing this. If you have a a low consciousness, and you, you know, eventually you say, oh, why are we doing this? You know, why are we spending so much money? Why are we making so much effort? Better we just, you know, sit in the temple and chant Hare Krishna and not, not you know, uh, try to do all these things, you know. So, yeah, that's that. Some people are like that. They want to just sit in the temple and chant. And it's good, it's good to say as well that mention about people. Yeah, why didn't why did Prabhupada come to America? He could have just stayed in Vrindavan and gone back to Godhead, you know. Why take all that trouble? It's about uh, constructing big, big buildings or that. Yeah, that's sometimes the, people they help you society. They also argue like that, you know. Yeah. Uh, using everything, so what's the difference? Well it depends. Uh, if if you if you build a big big temple to facilitate your sense gratification, you know, that's nonsense. Just like, you know, you build a temple, you call it Birla Mandir. What is it, Birla Mandir? What does that mean? <laughs> you know, is that is that the right name for the Mandir? You know, Birla Mandir. <laughs> well, Birla is an English, no? no, Birla is the big business family in India. And they build their the temples, but they call them the people call them Birla Mandir. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we don't, we don't, I mean, this is not, you know, Harivulas Mandir, right? <laughs> this is, this is, this is, uh, you know, Shishi Radha Nila Madhava Mandir. You know? So Prabhupada did not build, you know, uh, AC Bhakti Vedanta Mandir. You know? <laughs> yes. Okay. Did you learn anything in Birla Mandir? Yeah, you did. Huh? You could just go and uh, look around the building and take that. Yeah, see, that's because it was Birla Mandir. It wasn't Krishna Mandir, it was Birla Mandir, right? You, you appreciate Birla, you don't appreciate Krishna when you go to that, that so called Mandir. Right? What the original name of Birla? It's the family name of this big uh, industrial uh, family. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> I mean, you haven't. You didn't know about that, but uh, it's a family that that is very rich. And they build these temples, and they call them Birla Temple, you know, Birla Mandir, because it's all it's all. Yeah, you could call it Patel Temple. Yeah, it's to make them they make them look good. I mean, they might have some some purpose that's a little bit spiritual. I mean, but the people don't. I mean, here's a person that went there, right? You also went. Did Did you learn anything there? It was like an attraction. Yeah, 
Everywhere. Everywhere in India. All the major cities. Okay. Yeah, but so you went there. Did you learn anything there? No, you learned to appreciate Birla family. You know, that's... <laughs> Specifically, Dhanas, the family. It's just, look... India is an amazing place. See, it's just an amazing place. I'm, I'm sure they had some type of little bit of a sincere desire, right? They didn't build a, a Birla nightclub, you know? They built a temple. But, but the real meaning of the temple is not communicated there. It's more appreciation of the family for their charitable work, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But in the UK, where in the UK, where the bhakti is in Germany. Yeah. 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 Good childhood. We used to visit the Delhi Town Temple as well as another attraction. Another attraction. Like a villa. Did you understand anything? No. <laughs> because we did the same thing. Yeah. Well, you got some prasad. You get prasad in the Birla temple? I don't know, maybe I don't know. Thank you, sir. The white thing? Yeah, mystery, yeah. What do they worship? Oh. They have deities. They give you mystery, huh? Whoa, that's cheap. Yeah. They're bunnies. Yeah. Other place, other place. Yeah. Uh, I do, when I was in 10th grade, I was in uh, two temples. A Juhu temple. Yeah, and I still remember eating Pitala. I don't remember anything else. I remember <laughs> I, I ate Pitala. Wow. Okay. So, this is the thing with the Hindus, they, they, they visit temples, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, all glory is to Srila Prabhupada. So, how to use everything in Krishna Sir, second chapter, uh, 63rd verse? Let's see. Um, yeah, he says. On the other hand, a person in Krishna consciousness knows how, knows how to use everything in the service of Krishna. Therefore, he does not become a victim of material consciousness. So there it is. You know, someone who's really Krishna conscious can use everything. One time Prabhupada was asked, how do you use the atomic bomb in Krishna's service? He said, we, we uh, use it against the communists. <laughs> <laughs> Haribo. So at the end of the day, we come come down to the 